Hey everyone and welcome back. So I want to talk about components. Now components are very important to every design system and one of the most important component that we create are buttons. Now as you can tell over here I have two different types of buttons. I typically have my button that is a grow based button and a button that is a fixed based button. Now what does that mean? Now a button that grows is a button that grows with the content within. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to create just an instance of that component. And if I start typing in here, hello, this button grows. You'll see that the button grows with the content. If I remove these icons, now the button shrinks. So that is a growing button. A fixed button is exactly the opposite. So let's take that component and bring it up over here. Now, if I were to say this button is fixed, you'll see that it is indeed fixed, but I can stretch out this component and I can make it full width. There are a couple of times where we will do this within our application where we will have buttons that span 100% width from left to right. This is where you would use something like that. Now you may be asking me, Daniel, what is base? What is that? Now I've created this thing called base because when you create your initial component, it's not going to be like, like this. It won't be like beautiful, like it won't have any styles. There won't be variants of it. You'll have to create a version where this is just your base version. Everything else is based off of this. If I modify this in any way, like say if I expand it, every other variant that is a grow variant on my left hand side here, you'll see will actually expand or if I change the border radius like I just did so it's very important to create like a base that you can base everything off of that's exactly what it is if I put a period in front of it it will hide it from my component list but you do need a paid account so another thing is you do need a paid account for your design system if you want to use it across other files trust me it is very much worth it if you are using a paid account, like with your company, that works fine as well. Like that's perfect to have like those libraries, but if you're using it just for yourself and you want to use a design system and use it for like a project or a bunch of different other files, you're going to need to have a paid account for that. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second, but this is what I've done. I've created these different regular fixed and a regular grow button. Now, the reason why I've named them regular is just because I think this is regular size. If I wanted to create a variant, which is smaller, I can create another base button or I can create a, another component based off of this instance. Totally up to you. I don't use the smaller buttons enough for me to do that. I may use them. I may create another version. So let's go into how I've gone ahead and actually taken these buttons and turn them into different variants. So I have a primary, I have a secondary and a tertiary. So let's get right into it. If I have a button here, you'll see this is my primary button. But if I look within this structure, there's my regular grow and everything else. Now, all I've done here is I'll show you exactly what I've done. So I've taken this button, I'm going to just duplicate it right here. And let's say I name this default. The only problem with like row buttons is if you see this, this little container here, you're just going to have to this frame, you're going to have to just bring it to the edge to properly size it. So if I was going to create a default button like that, where I can reuse within my application, I'm going to do that. I'm going to change colors. So I'm going to use like my primary yellow. Remember what I said about colors. So if my UI is white. I want to change it to like a UI, which is like a gray 80. My text will be 
text gray 80 as well. And there you go, I kind of have my button. I can even go into other styles. So I have some styles in here around different like uh, shadows. So I have a default shadow. And there you go, I have my primary button. Looks exactly like that. And all I would need to do is, I'm not going to change this, this instance. I'm actually going to create another frame around it. So option command G and I have another frame. And I'm gonna rename this super cool button. <laughs> and I'm gonna just create that as a component, option command K, or you can go into your toolbar. So if I reverse that, command Z, so I have my ability to just go like that. And that's a component. Now if I go into my assets, and I go into my buttons, I will see my super cool button up there. I mean, it's not in a nice folder. You'll notice just how we have our base buttons here. We have our primary buttons. And that's based off of the frame they're in. That's how I've separated them. So that way I can easily access components, not necessarily based off of their naming convention, but based off of the frames that they're located in. And that's just the best practice I find for creating components, separate them by frame so they're easily accessible when you need to grab them. So I have all my grow versions for primary buttons, all my like fixed versions for secondary and so on. And so this is my super cool component button that I can just reuse and reuse and you know, in this instance, if I were to create, let's delete one of them. If I were to create an active version, let's see what I've done here for active. So all I've done basically is I've made the pass through 80%. So that way it looks like it's, you know, when you're clicking it, just like a nice hover state in a way, but there is, it's very much different from that first state. So I'll just go ahead and I will set that to 80%. There is a variance there. And I can even go ahead and go right in there and set that to the active shadow, which is maybe just a little bit lighter. So it looks like it's a press down, a press down button. And let's go into our layer section and you'll see this is very much an instance. You'll see that super cool button over here. You'll see my other super cool button. But over here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to detach this instance. I'm not going to detach the base, just the initial instance. So option command B, and I'm gonna rename it super cool button active. Now this is very good. And this is what I said about like, you know, your design system is not just for you. Oftentimes designers aren't really designing to show like active states or disabled states, or well, maybe disabled states, it really depends how in depth you're going with your different user flows you're trying to show others. But when we hand off something like this to developers, we're showing them all the different types of variations of buttons they need to code. So this is my active button, and this will trigger when this is clicked. So if I were to create a prototype, this is what I would do. So when I click on this, we can do on mouse down. We're gonna swap, super cool button active. And that is not instant, we're just gonna smart animate it. And what I'm going to do here is, or we can actually, sorry, dissolve that. I don't think it's gonna work because they're not the same name. And what I'm gonna do is over here on mouse up, I'm actually gonna go back. And that's just gonna dissolve. Let's see what this prototype looks like. So you'll see when I'm clicking it, there is very much a change now I can even set this to like 50% if you wanna see more change than anything. I'm not clipping the content. Okay, let's go back to our prototype and you'll see there is a change in that interaction. We're giving them a lot of feedback. So don't just create the default button. Let me delete that. Don't just create the default button. You need to create like the variations that go alongside that. And when you're working on desktop, that may be like hover states as well. 
So I've gone ahead and done that. I've created disabled buttons. I've also created like a secondary button where it's just like a white background with a shadow. And I've created those variations with active and disabled as well. Same with the tertiary. I don't have a, a disabled button because I'll never use a disabled button in this instance. But I've done the exact same thing for fixed as well. So when you're creating buttons, when you're creating components like that, remember to think about all the different types of use cases for that button. I may even be missing something here and I totally understand that. And I understand that, you know, these things may change. I may use different colors in the future. I may use different typefaces, different icons, but I've made it so it's very much modular. I have this icon now, this is my instance, and you know, I, I want this to be like an add button now. I'm using it for the sole case of an add button. I'm gonna not delete it, it'll just hide it, which is perfect. And for this button, I'm going to swap it out for another icon. Do we have an add icon in here? Oh, there it is, plus. And just like that, we've created our own component and I'm just going to shrink that down so that we have proper sizing. And there you go. You have your own component that you can use in any which way you like. And that is how I've built out buttons for our design system.